Welcome, I'm Tim from the Baby Lab at the Marx Institute for Brain Behaviour and Develop at Western Sydney University. It's great to have you joining us today for our lunch uh, webinar on the benefits of multilingualism. Today's webinar is for parents, educators and grandparents. And we are thrilled to have so many of you here. We also have health and education professionals with us. So welcome everybody. I'd like to start off by firstly acknowledging and pay respects to the custodians of all the lands on which we meet today. And we pay our respects to elders past and present. And a special welcome to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people here today. So what's in this webinar? We're going to start by understanding what it means to be multilingual. We'll then answer the question of whether it is possible to learn two languages at the same time. We've got information for parents who might be concerned about speaking to their child with an accent. Then we will cover the benefits of multilingualism. And we'll finish off by pointing you to useful online resources and answering your questions during the uh, Q&A today. So as we're ch chatting, if you have any questions, please go to the Q&A section. It's a, it's a little uh, chat box that you can click on and start typing um, your response and you can show that um, for, for everyone. So everyone can see uh, your question as I'm sure you probably have the same questions as other um, participants. So if you haven't done this before, um, you just need to click on that icon at the bottom of the screen. If you're not in full screen mode, you can click on the icon with the three dots that gives you the more options and then select the Q&A icon. We'll place all the links in the chat section of the webinar um, at the end. So you can click on the link and check it out. This webinar will also be available on the Mark's Baby Lab website, as well as the Facebook page and the YouTube channel after we finish. So you can review it and let your friends know to watch it too. I'm going to start by introducing you to Associate Professor Mark Antonou who is an expert on bilingualism. Hi, Mark, welcome. Welcome to this webinar. I'm, I'm wondering if you can tell us a bit about what multilingualism is. Sure, thanks, Tim. It's actually really challenging to come up with a definition of multilingualism that everyone agrees on. Some definitions are too restrictive because they require equal proficiency in each language, and this is simply unrealistic. A useful definition is that bi and multilingualism refers to the regular and frequent use of two or more languages in daily life. And that really captures what multilingualism is, but also leaves enough flexibility to account for the different ways in which people learn and then use their languages. Thanks for that, Mark. Um, just a question, is it normal for people to use more than one language? Absolutely. Uh, most people on earth speak more than one language and it's estimated that between one half to about three quarters of all people are multilingual. So it is normal and healthy and as we will soon find out, it is also beneficial. And that also means that many of us who are living in Australia and who only speak English are actually in the minority of people worldwide. Right. Um, some people think that multilinguals need to be equally fluent in each language. Is that the case, Mark? Uh, some people make the incorrect assumption that in order to be truly uh, multilingual, one must have a perfect command of each language with no gaps in their knowledge or speak without an accent or never make any mistakes. And that is far too restrictive. Even monolinguals make mistakes when they talk. They do it all the time. Uh, these assumptions about multilingual people ignore the reasons why we learn languages in the first place and how we use language. Languages are used for different purposes, of course, often in different settings. And so it is perfectly normal to have some topics that you're less comfortable talking about in one language 
as well as gaps in your vocabulary. You'll find that even the most balanced multilingual speakers have one language that is stronger if you look closely enough. So the perfectly balanced bilingual speaker probably doesn't exist. People learn their languages under different circumstances. Some learn from their parents, others learn in a classroom. And due to the way that their life um, turns out, the way languages are used can change quite dramatically. For instance, due to immigration or travel or a new relationship or a change of occupation. And this makes multilinguals extremely diverse. Mm, that's interesting, Mark. Um, I myself am uh, multilingual speaking and I often make a lot of mistakes. And um, I, I wish, you know, my mum speaks Polish and I wish she was able to um, speak Polish to me just so I could learn, you know, another language. Um, so, you know, I guess, can you tell me some of the ways that people who speak multiple languages differ from one, you know, to the other? Sure. Bilingual speakers obviously speak different pairs of languages. So someone who speaks English and French will obviously differ from someone who speaks, say, Mandarin and Cantonese. Those are immediately obvious differences. People may also differ in the order in which they learn their languages. So someone who learns English before French, for instance, will have a different accent to someone who learns French before English. Aside from that, the age at which the additional language is learned also relates to the degree of accent, level of proficiency that will be attained, and so on. So those who are exposed to both languages from birth, um, we refer to those individuals as simultaneous bilinguals. Those exposed to one language from birth and an additional language at some later point are referred to as sequential bilinguals. And depending on when the second language is learned, they can be further broken down into early versus late bilinguals. And it's generally thought that earlier is better when it comes to language learning. But at the same time, we also know that it is never too late to learn a language. So you shouldn't be discouraged. Another factor that is very important is how frequently and widely used each language is. Languages that are used more often and in a wider variety of settings um, and with a greater number of people will tend to result in the best learning outcomes. So if you want your child to speak an additional language, giving them the opportunity to interact with as many speakers of that language as possible is the best way. Thanks, Mark. It's, it's good to know that um, you can always pick up a second language at any time. So maybe I can speak Polish after all. Um, and, you know, I think we are all interested to hear about how children can learn two languages in early childhood. We've got um, Marike Van Houten here, who is a research fellow within the Marx Baby Lab at Western Sydney University. Um, so is it the case then that children may learn two or more languages simultaneously. Thanks, Marie Kay. Hi, Tim. Yeah, for sure. Um, as Mark mentioned, bilingualism can take many different forms, and um, there are many locations in the world where it is the norm for children to learn two languages at once from early on in life. And it's in fact been estimated that the majority of children in the world are bi or multilingual. Um, but even in places like the greater Sydney area in which English is the dominant language, more than 35% of, of the people there speak a language other than English at home. And across all of Australia, that's about 20%. So children growing up in such households will generally grow up learning two and sometimes even more languages at once. And this is seen across all walk box of life. And, and it seems to come as a natural consequence of having routine exposure to more than one language. Wow, I didn't realize that it was such a great number, especially in the greater Sydney area. That's so interesting. And can you tell me more um, about the differences between mono and multilingual language development? Of course. 
Um, the exact trajectory of both uh, monolingual and multilingual language development has long been uh, unclear. It was not until about maybe 30 years ago that researchers were able to start studying this in the lab. And since then, there's been a lot of experimental work that has focused on how the acquisition of more than just a single language affects children's language development. And it turns out that whether or not you find differences depends in part on the comparisons that you're making. So if you take the number of words that young children know, for example, if you look at um, one of the two or more languages, you initially find that multilingual children may know some fewer words than their monolingual uh, peers of the same age. But if instead you're comparing the number of concepts, for instance, that children have words for regardless of the language, then this, this discrepancy disappears. And perhaps even more importantly, in those cases where we do see differences in early language processing between mono and multilingual children in the lab, those kinds of differences are generally very small, they're short-lived, and their effects are neg negligible in daily interactions. So overall, the trajectory of language development in multilingual children is definitely more similar to that of their monolingual peers than it is dissimilar. Great, thanks Marie Kay for that. Um, if you've just joined us, you can add any questions using the Q&A button on the bottom of your Zoom screen and we'll get to them at the end. Next, um, I would like to introduce Professor uh, Paula Escudero, who is an expert on language learning. So Paula, I know that many parents are concerned about teaching their child a language because they themselves speak with an accent. Um, so what does the latest research tell us about this? Thanks for this important question, Tim. Um, the current research is overwhelmingly in favor of parents passing their language, the languages to their children. It is important to always keep in mind that children will inevitably and quickly learn the societal language, which is English in Australia, from others. So if English is not your native language, you do not need to speak to your children in English. They will learn it without an accent, even if they start at primary school. Instead, what we should do is aim at emphasizing, promoting and nurturing the other language or languages spoken at home. If our goal is to continue the children's multilingualism throughout their lifespan. Crucially, if you speak a language other than English with a non-native accent, don't be afraid to pass it to your children. Multilingualism is actually a superpower. Don't let them miss out. Your children will not, will not only learn about a language and culture, but also realize the diversity in a, in a normal thing, it, the diversity is a normal thing, and that languages are easy to learn. They will then find it really easy to improve their proficiency in that language later in life and will help them to learn any other language in the future. It's a win-win situation. You practice your other language and your children feel welcome in a new and fascinating world. But should parents be concerned if they speak with a foreign accent? It really doesn't matter if you have an accent. Everyone has an accent and no accent is better than the other. I know that many people think that having a foreign accent indicates inability to speak a language well, which is in most cases not true. But having an accent is special. It signals you are multilingual or that you or your family come from a different country and have experienced growing up with multiple cultural influences. If English is not your native language, your children will hear your non-native accent when you speak English in the community, resulting in enhanced empathy and understanding of diversity. Right, so it sounds like the way that we think about accents definitely needs to change. Yeah, that's right, Tim. We should actually consider multilingualism as a synonym for richness and opportunity. Multiple accents and languages increase the richness of our country. Being able to operate in multiple languages enables diversity or diverse problem solving mechanisms leading to higher social skills. In fact, despite small and mostly insignificant delays as Marika mentioned in multilingual speech, due to having much to choose from when speaking, multilingualism actually provides a bouquet of benefits. This may sound a bit extreme, but I actually think that the topic of conversation in politics and in the society 
should be on the limitations of multilingualism instead, and what we can do to do, reduce the number of monolinguals in Australia. All right, that's, that's great to hear that multilingualism is something that we should be promoting. Thank you so much for that, Paola. Uh, let's now learn about the benefits of multilingualism. I'm going to introduce you to Maya, who is a qualified uh, speech and language pathologist. Um, and Maya is also completing a PhD on bilingualism. So thanks for that, Mark, on the next slide. And, you know, can you tell us some of the myths, Maya, about multilingualism? Sure, I'd be happy to. A uh, common myth is that exposing your child to multiple languages may result in a language delay. Does it? Does it really? Bilingualism does not cause language delay. There is no evidence to support this myth. As reinforced by Marika, language development in bilingual children is similar to that of monolingual children more than it is dissimilar. Uh, some parents worry that their child is having trouble learning multiple languages when they hear them mixing languages. Uh, for instance, my toddler will say apple stalk which means apple juice, but this is a normal process referred to as code switching. Even uh, multilingual adults code switch when conversing informally with speakers of the same language. Uh, some of the multilinguals listening will relate to this, I know I do, uh, but code switching is not a sign of disorder in adults, uh, nor is it a sign of delay in children. When exposing children to more than one language, some parents fear that their child will lag behind and will be disadvantaged relative to their monolingual peers. It seems that these myths stem from the idea that since language learning is challenging, a child is likely to get confused, but there is no evidence to support that claim. And currently there are countless children around the world discrediting these myths and research on the benefits of uh, multilingualism is mounting. Yeah, it's really um, interesting and it's good uh, peace of mind, you know, to hear um, just the, the pure benefits and that, you know, children don't get confused with um, different languages, with different accents. And I'm sure that a lot of viewers today are gonna get a lot out of this um, webinar. And, you know, it's our duty and as educators and, and all of, the great research you're doing to, to share this knowledge and, you know, to remove this myth. So, you know, can you tell us about some of the benefits um, of multilingualism even, even further? Yes, of course. So there are several benefits of uh, being, to being multilingual. Uh, to start with, there are sociocultural benefits. Uh, Wade Davis, an anthropologist said, language is not just a body of vocabulary or a set of grammatical rules. It's a vehicle through which the soul of each particular culture comes into the material world. When children speak another language, they gain access to another culture and the views and perspectives associated with it. This insight teaches children that there are different ways of thinking, expressing emotion and experiencing the world. Language naturally also provides links to family, friends and community all of which are important in children's well-being and development. Encouraging children to maintain their home language or learn a language other than English can also have benefits on children's future employability. In addition, it can enhance trade and international relations. Finally, there are uh, well-documented cognitive benefits. We don't have enough to time to discuss all of these benefits, but several are listed on the current slide. Attention control and problem solving are two recognized benefits of learning more than one language. Attention control lets children choose what they pay attention to and what they ignore. It supports goal-driven behavior and self-control. Researchers believe that enhanced attention control in multilingual speakers is a, result, is a result of their regular need to inhibit one language to use the other without interference. The cognitive flexibility required by, ling by bilinguals when switching languages has also been linked to enhanced problem-solving skills. 
such cognitive benefits would have implications for children in social and classroom situations. Uh, in addition to this, Tim, researchers have reported that ongoing use of two or more languages delayed the onset of dementia by an average of four years. Interesting, isn't it? Wow, yeah, that's, that's incredible. I'm going to have to start learning a lot of languages and I think quickly. Thanks for that, Maya. Um, thanks to everyone that are putting in their questions in the chat box and, you know, we'll, we'll get everyone to, to speak to those points shortly. And, you know, well, now that we know all of the benefits of multilingualism, how can we encourage, promote and maintain it with our children? So to start with, parents and caregivers are essential in promoting multilingualism, engaging in regular talking and learning experiences with their children in the home language will support its development and maintenance. Uh, using home languages functionally and meaningfully is vital. Video, chat, uh, video chats with grandparents or family members who speak the home language can be organized or play dates with multilingual families arranged to encourage use of the home language in various interactions. It is also important to use the home language in learning experiences such as book reading, singing, arts and crafts, writing stories and creating books. Such experiences will not only enhance vocabulary growth, but also encourage literacy development in the home language. Books are full of vocabulary we don't use in our daily routines, which tend to expose our children to similar words around uh, morning, afternoon and nighttime routines. Instead, books take us on adventures far and wide, exposing our children to new, exciting vocabulary in their home language. And actually, current research indicates that home language literacy acquisition provides several educational advantages to multilingual children not to mention fostering higher levels of language proficiency in the home language. So uh, engage with your local library for books or audiobooks uh, in different languages. Support in promoting and maintaining home languages can also occur in education centres with programs such as Little Multilingual Minds uh, and community language schools that have been established to make native language learning more accessible. Home language maintenance has its challenges, but the notable benefits make it all worthwhile. Thanks, Tim, Maya. We have some time now for questions. Thank you for all the great questions that are rolling in, and we'll do our best to respond to you all. As you're typing out your questions, we've listed some useful links to resources for parents and educators on the screen, which we hope you'll find helpful.